Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the land geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for today's guest because his story is really remarkable. And um, the way that he sort of transitioned from being like this network marketing superstar into his own company and the entrepreneurial journey, I can't wait to hear all about it. But I would be remiss. And not properly introduce my co-host, Scott Todd, Six Sigma from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you are not, you are not automating your Craigslist postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Uh, pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. Um, I'm uh, I'm excited about our guest. Are you excited? I am. You know, it's um, I can't wait to hear Ray's story because you know it's it's uh, one I think that's of of a trans uh, transformative uh, story. I can't wait to hear about it. Yeah, yeah. Before we talk to Ray, though, I do want to plug away and mention that plug postingdomination.com, aren't you? No, no, not at all. Because today's podcast is sponsored <laughs> by Lone Geek. LoneGeek.io. I remember the old days on Sunday afternoon, instead of playing with the kids, being with my family, I'd have to manually enter my payments on my notes. And then I'd see that a note was in default. Or a note was late and I'd have to pick up the phone or shoot off an email to the person that owed me money. Today, I have a set it and forget it system called LoanGeek.io. I can collect credit cards. I can collect ACH checks and all for the low, low fee that you can find out all about at LoanGeek.io. LoanGeek, set it and forget it. What do you think? Good, good commercial? Uh, uh, I just made it up. Ray, Ray likes it. Ray, Ray likes it. You know, I, 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 I think you've done well, Mark. You know, I think without for that being a professional copywriter, I think you've done well. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk to Ray Higdon. Ray Higdon is a two-time best-selling author and a former number one income earner in network marketing company. And he joined while he was in foreclosure, which we'll hear all about. He has shared the stage with little known names like Tony Robbins, Bob Proctor, Les Brown, Robert Kiyosaki, who lives here, and many more. Ray and his wife no longer build a network marketing company so they can better serve the profession as coaches, speakers, and trainers. Their coaching company was recognized this year on the Inc. 5000 as one of America's fastest growing companies this past year. Ray Higdon, how are you? Hey, hey, what's happening, man? I wish I, wish I was walking. Well, you know. You, you can get a, you should get a treadmill desk. So I, I, I might, you know, I, I typically hit 22 to 25,000 steps a day without a treadmill desk. So it might concern me if I had a treadmill desk, I might break something. I don't know. <laughs> if you're walking that much or moving yeah. that much a day, you're just fine, Ray. Yeah. So, so Ray, <laughs> what are you, what are you doing? Like, what, what are you doing? Like you're out there walking or? So um, almost every one of my coaching calls, I, um, I walk, you know, while I'm doing coaching calls. And, um, and I also, you know, every day I, I, I walk and listen to audio books. So, you know, that, uh, and then just the everyday of chasing around my, my one-year-old. <laughs> so, so like how, how many, uh, how many hours a day are you out like walking? Uh, I mean, I, I think that varies. That's not really that long. I mean, I think it's a couple hours, something like that. Yeah. I, you know, Mark, if I did that, I'd, I'd look as good as, as Ray. <laughs> it's key. I don't know. But Scott, you're, you're a biker. I mean, you're, you're, yeah. doing, you're, you're doing well. You're doing yeah, well. Okay. okay. All right. But let's hear the story. Yeah. So, Ray, how did you become Ray Higdon in, in your for, in foreclosure? Like, become this network marketing superstar like what the hell happened, man? Yeah, yeah. Uh, never uh, suspected this. Uh, wasn't the career goal, but uh, it's been been a lot of fun. So I, um, you know, I had worked my way up corporate America and uh, worked my way, you know, up to a pretty pretty decent salary. 
And what I noticed was that uh, I was in a place where almost any growth would equal more pain. I looked at my boss, I looked at his boss, I looked at her boss. They were all, they were all making more money, but they had less freedom, stressed out, anxiety. And I also started to notice how little time I was getting to see my two boys. I have two older boys. One's now a, a freshman at Florida State University and, uh, and then a, a little bit younger one. And, um, you know, I was spending more time with pictures of my kids than the real thing because I was going in before they were awake. I was going, coming home often after they were asleep because of, you know, the salary that I was getting and the demands that they put on me. So they would, you know, pay me more, but also demand more. And uh, so at that time here in the state of Florida, uh, you know, the real estate boom was going on. And so I saw, you know, people that I went to high school with making lots of money. And I'm like, man, they can do it. I can do it. And uh, so I, you know, I started studying, you know, for a little bit, uh, you know, not, not very long, but started studying and started looking at real estate investing. And so I actually, uh, April of uh, 2005, I left the corporate world and went into real estate. So I was, you know, I had my, my mortgage license and I was also, you know, flipping properties, buying rental properties, doing, doing the whole thing. And that went really, really well for a while. <laughs> and then when the market changed, I realized I wasn't as smart as I thought I was and I got beat up really, really bad. And so I, uh, you know, lost every dime that I'd saved my entire life, um, went into personal foreclosure on my personal home and foreclosure on, you know, some of our different investments, um, constantly chased by bill collectors and really questioned my sanity, my self-worth, uh, you know, and just, it was, it was a, it was a bad, time for the empire. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I had also at the same time, about a, maybe a year earlier, I'd gone through a divorce and uh, there, was, there was just a lot of punches in the face that I took between, you know, 2008 and, and 2009. I was uh, dating and so I had a, uh, had a girlfriend that I've uh, been dating for a little bit and she actually started paying my utility bills. Um, you know, she was working at the Nordstrom makeup counter and, and helping me out uh, while I tried to, you know, figure things out. And uh, fortunately for me, she stuck around and she's now, now my wife. And uh, we got a beautiful daughter together and, and I just couldn't be more blessed in, in that area. But uh, back in July of 2009, a friend of mine, he invited me to a home meeting and I had, I knew what it was about. I knew it was network marketing. And, and honestly, I'd sworn off network marketing because, you know, I'd been in a few different companies and had kind of brought my, you know, what I thought was my marketing expertise to the company and, and you know, just had some bad run-ins with, with uplines and bad up run-ins with the company. And I'd sworn off it because I just, you know, I just had some bad experiences. Well, this was a different scenario because I didn't have anything going. I, my credit was shot. I was dead broke, being chased by book collectors. And you know, I didn't have any idea. I was trying at the time to do small business um, like marketing consulting, which was just really, really not going well. And because, hey, all the money dried up, so these guys don't wanna spend any money on marketing, what the hell am I talking about? And uh, so, you know, it, it was tough. And so when I saw that, I said, you know, screw it, I got nothing else. I got nothing else going on. I'm gonna throw everything I have, every cell in my body at this darn thing, and I'm gonna make this damn thing work. And, uh, you know, so I told, I told my girlfriend at the time, you know, Jess, um, not my wife, uh, you know, I told her, I said, hey, listen, you know, the next two years are going to be just rough. You know, we're not going to have romantic anything. Not that we had, right, because I was broke. But, um, you know, we're not going to have romantic anything. I'm going to be on the phone nonstop. It's, it's you know, it's going to be crazy. And it's probably going to be like that for the next two years. I mean, I was, you know, at that point, I was over a million dollars in debt. And, um, you know, things weren't looking good in any, any direction other than my sheer willpower to get out of that hole. And so I went after it and it happened a lot faster than I thought. And, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, they hear these hypey, spammy, scammy, you know, claims from network marketers. And, um, you know, so they come in with, you know, weird expectations or something. I came in with, it was going to take two years to make hardly anything. Right. So I just had a very, very different expectation than most people who treat it like a hobby, you know, treat it. And so I went at it. I went at it nonstop. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how many hours a day, but pretty much every hour. 
And within five months, I was at 10,000 a month. Uh, within seven months, 40,000. Within 10 months, at 50,000. Um, became the number one income earner in that company. Did over a million in commissions, you know, with that company. And I didn't intend to, but what that did is it set the stage for uh, demand. You know, people saw that we were using the internet and not a lot of people were using actual marketing to build their network marketing business. Now, people may maybe were using social media, but they weren't using it very well. We were using social media, we were blogging, I was doing videos, and I was doing kind of standard internet marketing, you know, stuff, but utilizing it in a, in a fashion to grow my network marketing team. And so that created a lot of demand of people wanting to know how to do that. And so we weren't intending to, but we started having people saying, hey, you know, do you have a home study course? Do you have, do you do coaching? Do you do this, do that? And, um, you know, so we did a little bit here and there. We did a, you know, my wife, I remember, um, you know, her first, you know, product launch, um, you know, we did a little product on, you know, how she built her position to 10,000 a month prospecting people on Facebook that, you know, people she didn't know. And she did, you know, a little, uh, you know, we did a little product launch, didn't know exactly what we were doing, but, you know, that generated 850,000 in 10 days. (laughs) And so we saw, wow, there's like a demand here. And so then we, you know, did a few more things, did a few more things. And back in um, 2013, that company that we were the number one incomers of merged into a, a larger company. And at that point, it was an interesting time in our career in that our coaching training was rocking so much and it was cr- requiring our attention that, you know, we kind of throttled back on building our own, our, our network marketing team, but it was still paying, you know, multiple six figures residually and still paying out. And it did that all the way through uh, last year. Um, In uh, January or February of last year, we decided that it would be more congruent if we just weren't associated with any particular network marketing company. And so we did actually sell that asset. We sold that position. And uh, now we're, you know, we're focused on coaching, training the profession as a whole. Uh, We believe it's a great profession, but Often it is misrepresented by, you know, people that don't know how to act professionally around, you know, business. And uh, we think there's still a lot of, lot of work left to be done for this, for this profession for, for sure, but it's a great profession. And we were very blessed and surprised and honored that, um, you know, last year we did get recognized on the Inc. 5000 list. We were number uh, 754 as far as fastest growing companies in, in the United States. And um, that's just like really crazy because, you know, I still very clearly remember looking at my Venetian blinds at bill collectors trying to get me and sometimes they would see me. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, it's been, it's been an awesome ride. And um, now we got a one-year-old daughter and Sabrina and just the light of my life. And now we're in the process of, you know, having me move from, you know, hardcore operator to actual business owner. And um, that's, that's kind of, you know, kind of where we are now. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? I, there's two things that he said that I, I really liked. Uh, one was that he attacked it like a business and not a hobby, right? Yeah. And, you know, you see a lot of people, well, let me back up. And the other thing that he, that he's not necessarily said, but what he did was he kept moving his feet. And that's something I always talk about is like, keep moving your feet because, you know, here's, here, here raise a million dollars in debt. You know, a, a lot of times people would be, then like shut down, go hide, head in the yeah. sand and, you know, uh, it's not, it's not easy to confront that big of a failure, but you know, what did he do? He, he developed the strategy, started moving his feet, implementing, executing. And then that's where the treating it like a business, not a hobby, because Mark, I mean, how many times do we see, uh, people, they, 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 they either have to solve a problem and they're like, Oh, okay. You know, okay. I'll get it. You know, and it becomes a hobby. And whenever you're starting something new, and you're going into it as a hobby, well, then that's going to be your outcome is it's going to be a hobby, you know, and you're going to get the results of a hobbyist versus if you attack this thing, like it is a true business and put everything you have into this, this thing, well, then the results are going to be much higher for you than you just attacking it like a hobbyist would. You know, I'm I'm always skeptical of somebody that makes so much money so fast. And what's yeah. interesting about Ray's story is that he kept growing it and he kept growing it. 
and it didn't flame out. And so what I find really interesting is from the entrepreneurial standpoint, the passive income piece is that, okay, he's got a, he's got a solid model in this company. He starts building a team, him and his wife start working together. And then he's like, okay, how do I get to the next level? And sells out, has the actual exit, and then starts building another company. And going from operator to entrepreneur, uh, I think is really challenging. So Ray, tell me, um, how are you doing with that sort of transition now? And, and what steps are you taking to, to ease your way into that? Yeah, so for um, uh, seven years, I wrote every blog, um, over 3,000 blogs. Um, I did, you know, obviously I'm doing all the videos, but I mean, for four years, I'm doing the video editing. I'm just putting on the little intro outro. I'm, I'm doing like every piece. I'm emailing the list. I'm doing everything social media. And so just really looking at what is every piece that requires me? And there's multiple phases. And so this phase one has been now for the last two months, maybe three months. Uh, so it's, you know, recent I've had, you know, I now have a person that takes my content either from past events or we do like, we still do live streams cause I, you know, I enjoy them and she'll slice and dice, you know, pieces of them, create content, email the list out. And so that thing that I used to do every single morning myself for seven years is now, you know, handled, um, you know, raising our, you know, we did raise our prices as far as, you know, personal coaching and we brought in an outsource accountability coaching group. So, um, you know, we actually have, uh, you know, a pretty large accountability group that, you know, sells coaching every single week that doesn't require my time at all. Um, as far as my personal time, we're very, very qualifying around that. So I look at, it's something that I enjoy or I would just stop doing um, because it's not just, you know, yeah, it's profitable, but I want to make sure I'm enjoying it as well. And so when you get good at qualifying, then, you know, I'll look at my list of, of clients that I, you know, have calls with and I'm excited, you know, it's fun to talk to them. So, you know, it's not just profitable, but, but actually fun. And um, that, so phase one is just identifying, okay, um, what, where will the business break if I went away on a cruise, right? So that's kind of phase one. Phase two would be, how do you expand upon that? And so there's a great book out there called uh, uh, Scaling Up by Vern Harnish. It's written by the Gazelle Corporation, which we've actually, um, uh, we actually work with one of their consultants, with one of Gazelle's. And uh, they work with Rackspace and some pretty large companies. And uh, they say, if you want to grow, um, outsource the things you aren't good at. If you want to scale, outsource the things you're great at. And so that next phase would look like us uh, certifying speakers, certifying coaches, having others that we train to run events. And, you know, it's a model that's been, you know, done before, but um, that's kind of the, the rebrand of personal to something not so Ray and Jessica. Um, that would be kind of the phase two, three kind of, kind of scenario. I love it. I love it. That's, uh, that's really interesting how, how you have to go through that. Scott, what are your thoughts? Oh, you're, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Ray, Ray just dropped another bomb with the, uh, you know, if you want to grow, if you want to scale, great advice there. Yeah, that's a, that's a tweetable quote. It's, it's, it's tough because, you know, like you, as, as, as the entrepreneur and, and like the founder or whatever, you always think that you can do a better job than everyone else. And that might be the case, but that is very limiting. And so, you know, one of the, one of the mentors I worked with, you know, last year, uh, great speaker, very smart dude, great salesman from the stage, but he built a $250 million a year company by <laughs> training hundreds of other speakers to do what he was doing very, very well. And, and so it's tough uh, and most people don't, you know, and that's why they, they aren't an owner, but they're, you know, they're an operator slash, you know, entrepreneur. Um, but if you want to be an owner and actually own an asset that, that might operate without you, um, you kind of got to do that if you want to scale it. Yeah. And, and you're teaching people how to get to where you got to it as a network marketer. Is that correct? 
Yeah, so we, we have, there's a few different um, services that, that we provide. So we have for the person that just is, they don't know how to even talk to people, right? Like, you know, because I think that's the fundamentals are still very, very much needed. So, you know, how to talk to warm market, cold market, um, you know, how to operate on social media, the, you know, the fundamentals we sell a lot of. So those are more products that, you know, we sell every single day. Um, we have, uh, you know, accountability that, you know, some people, if they want to hit their goals, they just need that little bit extra accountability. So we have accountability coaching. And then we have um, our mastermind program, which is more for people who are wanting to build their personal brand online and build their marketing so that they can, you know, build their team. And, and often those people go on to offer their own coaching and, you know, their own, you know, products sometimes. And uh, so, yeah, those are kind of the main things. So people don't hire us, you know, like, uh, you know, help me with talking to my warm market. You know, that's, people don't hire us for that, but they may buy a product for that because we have lots of that. Uh, they usually hire us to help them with their personal brand and so that they attract more of the, their target market and people they want. Interesting, interesting. So you, you kind of work with like uh, speakers, if you will. Yeah, we work with, work with a lot of speakers, uh, work with a lot of big leaders. I mean, right. Uh, I don't know the current count, um, but we probably have five, six million dollar a year earners that are clients right now. I think over the last few years, we've had probably 25 different million dollar a year earners that, that we've coached to help them with their personal brand. Not necessarily to grow their team, but just so that they're known outside of their company. Because there's a lot of people that uh, make lots of money and are total celebrities inside their company, but no one knows them outside. And God forbid if something happens with that company or if there's a relationship issue with the company and the leader, which unfortunately does happen sometimes, um, they're not known. And so we help them to get it to where they're known outside of their company uh, just as well as they are inside. Very cool. Very cool. So your passive income piece then is really growing a team and a sales force and repurposing your products. So you're kind of like Sinatra, right? The whole thing with Sinatra was, he just sang. So yeah, really there you go. Nice. I, I love that analogy. That's, that's really awesome. Um, yeah, you know, we have a lot of evergreen funnels set up. So we have, you know, webinars that we drive ads to. So we're constantly looking to how do we spend more, you know, more on ads that, you know, that obviously work. And um, so, yeah, a lot, a lot of our revenue does come from, you know, automated webinars that, you know, have funnels and all that, all that fancy stuff. Nice. Nice. So, Scott, as far as like what we do with our, our business model, buying and selling raw land, a one-time sale, and the passive income from a note, right? What can we learn from Ray that we could apply to scale our land business to the next level? What do you think? Well, I think that, you know, the, uh, you know, kind of doing what Ray said about, you know, finding the stuff that you're good at and then getting people to do that for you. That's how you're going to scale the business is it's really, it's really about investing time to create systems and to train people that can go replicate what you do so that you don't have to be there to do it. And that's the only way to scale. I mean, it's the only way to scale because you know, Mark, uh, 2016, you and I had, uh, we both had big years, uh, to, to take that 2017 number, we're going to need more people to do that again in 2017 because we hit ceilings, you know, like with our current processes. I mean, the, the wheels didn't fall off, but at the same time, we can't double or triple the output of what we did uh, simply with the same, same amount of people. So what we need to do is we need to really look at, okay, how do I add more people to this? How do I train more people who are better at it than us? and get out of their way. And then, you know, and then, then we're really doing what Ray is, is doing and that's being the CEO. And, you know, if we, if we decide to, if we decide to go on a cruise for a month, uh, backpack through Europe, we don't need to be tied to our phones. You know, we can check in and, uh, you know, let, let the business run. Yeah. So sure. Ray, how do you, you know, uh, what was your biggest fear as far as doing that? Cause I, I'd imagine that, you know, taking it to the next level, there's a lot of fear as far as control or, you know, mm. even client control, right? Like, hey, how do I know the sales guy's not going to tell them something? 
something and hurt my brand because they want to get a sale. Then they come in and they're like, oh, wait, I thought I was going to make 10000 a month in five months. Like, Ray. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question because you do give up some control. And I, th- and I think control is the biggest thing that prevents scaling is, is that desire for, for control. Uh, you absolutely do give up some control. So the best, the best way to influence behavior is to have the right culture. And, you know, a lot of people have, you know, talked about culture. And I think, I think there's a lot of um, misconceptions around culture. The best, the best um, information I've ever seen around culture and vision was written by Jim Collins in 1996, uh, Harvard Business Review. And um, it's on uh, uh, crafting your company vision, I think is what it's called. It's probably, I don't know, 10, 14 pages, something like that. Epic. Epic. And so culture is just so important because it's what, you know, what, what is binding us together as a company and how do we want to operate? And, you know, like one of our core values is uh, uh, make everyone feel special. And that's, that's specified as at every customer engagement point. So if someone is calling in for, you know, a refund of a product or if they're at an event and they sneak in the event too soon, right before they're supposed to be, you still got to make them feel important, right? You know, it's not chastising. It's not they're small or not, you know, cool enough or, or whatever. But you have, a, you know, a core set of, of core values that when the core values are evaluated or are um, or broken, then that's addressed, and consistency in addressing them. So we've fired quite a few salespeople <laughs> and, you know, and we have checks and balances. Um, you know, it's interestingly enough, we have our, between our support staff and, and our, you know, social media presence, we have a really, really good reputation and uh, uh, relationships with most of our clients and students and, and, and audience. And so when there's a problem, we usually know fairly quickly and we just go, we, if we, it, it may be that we need to listen to a call and find out, okay, let's see if the behavior is, is really what they're saying. And, uh, and there's, you know, there's ramifications, but you have to have checks and balances in place. Um, you know, giving up control is, is, is definitely a tough one because here's, here's the gotcha is you will, and you, you will, and we're in this phase, right? I'm not the godfather or grandfather of scaling, but you know, we're in this phase of, losing efficiency to gain scale. So at one point in time, we had a extremely high, um, we had extremely high rates in certain areas of our business and due to bringing new blood in and due to, you know, expanding our vision of where we're going, some of those rates have decreased. So it would be really easy for me to say, let me get back in there. You know, let me get back in there and, and handle that and get it back up. And, um, but I'll always be capped if I do that. And so it's, uh, it's tough, not easy. You got to be willing to, you know, like, uh, you know, last year we, we did, uh, we did beat, you know, 2016, um, not, not by a large margin. And I think we might have made a little bit less profit because we're so investing in the infrastructure and, 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 and the business. Um, but that has set us up for what I think is going to be a really monumental, uh, 2017. It's fantastic. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm laughing because uh, I know like a, a year ago when I brought on my uh, sales manager, you know, that was really, really hard to, to basically say, okay, well, here's the keys. Yeah. And, uh, don't, don't write, because remember, like I'm not taking the calls anymore. You know, yeah. Mark, you've done the same thing as, you know, you're not taking the calls anymore. And you're like, okay, here's the keys to the car. Don't wreck the car. You know, don't just be careful. And then I remember, uh, we, we, uh, came out of the gate cause she started with me at the end of 2015. We came out of the gate in 2016 strong. Like I think we sold a, a property every single day for the first week. And then we nice. Two week hiatus. Mm. And I was like having a heart attack. Like, Oh man, maybe I need to take, maybe I need to take the reins back. And I didn't, I, I, you know, I let her, let her go, let her find her way. And then she stood up and she, she made it all work. And uh, we had a phenomenal 2016. But at the end of the year, I was trying something new. I was trying to, to push the, the numbers even higher. And I sent out an email. And uh, like I do, is a, a broadcast email. 
and people started responding. And when they respond, they respond to both her and I. And I, I wanted like, I, I wanted to like answer the questions. So I'm like answering the questions <laughs> and I forgot to copy her on them. Yeah. So then he's answering the questions. Right. And she's emailing me back saying, you know, and then I'm like, I finally email her a copy of it. And she's like, you and I are doing the same thing. Stop doing my job. And I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah. I'll go sit in the corner again. You know, like it. Yeah. Sorry for impeding on you. Yeah. It's a great example. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I remember when Scott would joke with me, like I work for her. She doesn't work for me. Right? Yeah. Even today, yeah. even today, it's like, you know, get this done. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, Ray, we're at that point now in the podcast <laughs> where I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art yeah. of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. Your mentorship has been invaluable, I think, on this podcast, but oh, thanks. one more bit of, of wisdom. Sure. You know, um, the... I get, I get asked a lot of times like, Oh, if I, you know, if I had to start over or if I had to go in a different niche or, you know, or whatever, cause keep in mind, I mean, I, I did, you know, four um, or five, five really hardcore years for real estate. And then, whoop, you know, totally switched, totally rebranded, totally went in a totally different direction. And, you know, the, my, my answer to that is I would determine uh, what it is that I want to become an authority of. That's, that would be step one. What do I want to become an authority of? What category of business? What, what you know, niche, what, you know, whatever you want to call it. And then I would decide, okay, who am I want? What is the type of person interested in that thing? Who do I want to attract? And what are their problems? What are their desires? How can I serve them? How can I add value? And I would start creating free content. That's how we've built everything that we have is just through free content. You know, we got... Uh, I think we're up to 900 uh, podcasts, um, you know, over well over, I think close to 4,000 now blog posts. Um, God, we hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of live streams. So we do a lot of free content to, you know, build up our email list and, and I'll, I'll, you know, offer different things. And so I just think life is easier if you're an authority and doesn't mean you have to be the number one authority, just an authority and an authority. The fastest way to become an authority is to be a teacher, to be an educator and to teach people things about that niche that you're passionate about or the niche that you want to provide value for. And that would be, you know, my tip is to look at yourself instead of just, you know, what can I get with this little marketing dealio, but how can I set myself up as an authority um, and going in that direction? Because life is a whole lot easier. You're not competing against just dollar for dollar advertisers, you're building a brand that people want to follow and people want to connect with. And uh, we actually, you know, teach this, we have a, a free webinar, this would be, you know, the, the action. Um, but if you if you'd like, you can check it out, uh, rayhigdon.com forward slash blogging. Uh, that's a training that that we've done, you know, quite a few times, and people have gone through it. Uh, I had one person, this is an interesting story, I had one person go through that training. And uh, she uh, within 30 days, and we certainly don't guarantee this because this is wacky, but um, within 30 days of going through that training, she had started blogging and creating content around her weight loss journey. And she was actually picked up and featured on the Rachel Ray show. So she was actually on the Rachel Ray show less than 30 days after going through that training, which is, which is pretty darn cool. Um, I don't know that you'll get on the Rachel Ray show. I wish, you know, I haven't been on the Rachel Ray show, but um, you know, it's a training that just shows you how we've done what we've done and the five steps to become an authority. Yeah, I love it. You know, it's funny. I have a, I have a really good friend out here who uh, works for Beachbody, the P90 yeah. people. She's like number one in, in the company uh, in sales. And she makes over a million dollars a year, part-time, four kids with a great okay. story. You know, stay at home so mom. The and got ripped. Uh, no, I, I don't want to say their name. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, unbelievable. So, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? All right, Mark, you gave this one to me earlier today and I have to share it because you shared it with me. The book, Tools of Titans. You're reading it. I love it. Yeah, I, I downloaded it immediately, started reading it. I'm impressed. Good, very good book uh, so far. Um, I think 
further ahead of it than I am. But uh, do yourself a favor and go get that book today, Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss, The Tactics, Routines, and Habits of Billionaires, Icons, and World-Class Performers. Yeah, I, Ray, I love that. There? What's that? <laughs> yeah, are you in there? I have the book, but no, I, I am yeah. not in there. You know, second edition. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's so much wisdom in there from so many cool people like Kevin Kelly's in there and uh, Mark Andreessen. Um, he's, he's got the guy that like freezes himself, like was able to like go above Mount Everest with whim or somebody. I mean, it's just yeah. really, it's a, it's a really cool book. Hmm. Um, yeah, I highly recommend it. And, and my tip of the week, since Scott Todd stole one of my best tips, is Ray Higdon. <laughs> um, learn more about Ray and Jessica and, um, and get your life to the next level. So, um, Ray, are we good? Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm uh, great meeting you guys, and uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, was there anything that we should have asked you that we didn't ask you? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I think, uh, you know, if you're, if you're listening, if you're watching this, listening to this and you have, you know, you're frustrated by the results that you have in your life, just understand that your habits created those results and you can change habits. Uh, you, you just can't change results. You can only change the habits that, that created those results. So focus on your habits and, uh, those results will change. I love it. Do you have a favorite habit that you do like a morning routine, morning ritual? that you think really moved the needle in your life because of this one or two habits? Um, I mean, a favorite, I mean, I, I think just intention, you know, uh, I mean, I used to wake up and just think that the day was going to happen and, you know, I hope it's a good day, you know, and, you know, I just wake up every day and I'm like, today's going to be awesome. There's, you know, unseen opportunity coming to me. There's uh, amazing opportunities coming to me. And, and I just, I just wake up with intention no matter what the day before was. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I want to thank Ray Higdon from rayhigdon.com. I will have links to his site and information. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com, and most importantly, postingdomination.com forward slash landgeek. Scott, we're, we're giving out too many links, I think. We've got to change this. What do, what do, you, what do you think? We, we are. I, I think we should narrow it down. Narrow it down. All right. <laughs> we're, we're going to have to, like, per podcast, like, rotate. Just one, like one per. Yeah. One, yeah, one per. And like, you're like, oh, last, last week it was sponsored by Lone Geek. This yeah. week it's sponsored by Landmodo. And the next week it's sponsored by my favorite website, thelandgeek.com. <laughs> Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land by Mistakes, and get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. Six Sigma, Scott Todd, thank you. Ray, I appreciate it. Yeah. And I want to thank all the listeners. And look, please subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. It's the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like Ray Higdon to come on, on the podcast and, and share his wisdom and, and his mentorship. So um, please do that. And if, you know, send us a screenshot. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. All right. Thanks. Awesome. So much. Let My freedom guess. ring. Let freedom ring, Mark. All right.